Hey guys, Graham here from TheRecordingRevolution.com with another 5 Minutes to a Better Mix tutorial. We're looking at 31 mixing tips in 31 days, and today's mixing tip is huge. All of these tips, sometimes they're not a specific trick or a technique as much as they are a hack or a philosophy or a way of working that will help guarantee you better mixes. And at the end of the day, that's what you want. And today's is no exception. Today I want to talk to you really quickly about using subtractive EQ. And what does that mean? It simply means choosing to cut frequencies with your EQ way more than you boost. I fought this for the longest time. People said, yeah, cut rather than boost. And I said, sure, that sounds all well and good. But when I would listen to, say, like a kick drum and it needed more low end, I would boost the low end. I mean, that's what I needed. It's missing low end, so let's turn it up. But here's the, the two problems with this, and here's the two great things about subtractive EQ. One is the problem with boosting over cutting, and these are blanket statements here, but bear with me, is that you're turning up noise rather than turning down noise. So every time I do a small boost, if I need a little, little more low end here on the kick drum, I turn it up. Bass guitar needs a little more low end somewhere else, turn it up. My vocals aren't cutting through the mix, so I turn them up a little bit at 2K. I'm boosting a little bit by little bit, and at the end of the day, I'm turning up noise in my tracks, and it takes away my headroom. My master fader's going to get clogged. If you use subtractive EQ, you remove the offending frequencies, and if you cut little by little throughout the mix, Two things happen. One, you have cleaner sounding tracks because you're removing noise as opposed to adding it. You have more headroom in your mixes because now you're sending a little bit quieter of a mix to your mix bus at the end of the day because you've technically turned down some of your tracks little by little. But here's the great thing about Subtractive EQ. It forces you to not just boost what you wish there were more of, but remove what's masking or what's getting in the way of the good parts of your tracks. Okay, now we don't always record tracks perfectly, I get that, especially if you're new to this. You're going to experiment and you might poorly mic an instrument. That's part of the learning process, so you need to compensate a bit in the mixing stage. But let me suggest to you that to compensate, and even the best of us need to use EQ to, to sculpt our tracks to fit well together, please try to cut out what shouldn't be there versus boosting. And let me give you a really simple example. Here is a kick drum track. I have an EQ plugin, but there's no EQ moves done to it. So this is just a little bit of compression on the kick drum. This is the way it sounded mic'd up. Now I have some attack. I can hear that, but I, I feel like it needs more low end, more bottom, more fullness. And that's just the nature of the way it was mic'd. So typically we would go to boost the low end, let's say around 100 hertz or something. But here's what happens when you use subtractive EQ. You go find a frequency that doesn't sound good and you try to remove it, okay? You hear that, that really cardboard sound? That's around 430, 440 hertz. Watch what happens when I take that out. Compare that to what it used to sound like. That gives it a fuller, rounder, less cymbal-heavy kick drum sound, and I haven't added any noise to the mix. If anything, I've taken away noise, and it's cleaned up my kick drum track a whole heck of a lot with one EQ move, okay? Now, I wouldn't be done with this kick drum, maybe. Maybe I would tighten it up a little bit with a, a high pass or uh, some other little EQ moves. But the idea is, if you find what's offensive to the ear, what's masking the best parts of the sound, by cutting a lot of the mids here, I'm going to hear more of the low end that's already there. And I'm going to hear more of the beater head that's already there. Does that make sense? I'm removing this mid stuff that's masking the low end and the high end. So instead of just saying I need to boost some of the low end so I can hear the bottom and boost some of the high end so I can hear the beater, I'm only adding noise when I could get the same effect by removing a lot of the mid-range stuff that is masking what's already recorded. So 
If you approach your tracks this way, it takes more patience. Trust me, because I am not a patient person, especially when it comes to mixing. If you feel like you're going to grab that low mid knob or that low end knob, let's say on a kick drum, you're like, oh, I got to crank it up. Stop for a second and think, okay, what is maybe masking the low end that I want to hear more of? Go find it. See if you can remove it. You'll get cleaner mixes every time if you think this way. Trust me, trust me, trust me on this. Subtractive EQ will help you out a ton. Okay, guys, thanks for watching again. This is Graham at TheRecordingRevolution.com. More five minutes to a better mix tutorials coming all month long. Check them out. Stay on the blog. Stay on YouTube. Don't miss a beat. Talk to you guys soon.